Yeah, look, it's not official yet. Obviously, no major uh, official announcement has come through yet. But um, we're imminent. It is very close. I'm waiting to see his contract firsthand. I want to see it properly because he's the B side. So you do as you're told, and we will uh, make sure it looks all good. No fake signatures, and uh, then we got to fight. No problem. If you moment ago around Devin Haney sort of on this TikTok. We've spoken personally about this. Is George, is it true he's got three days? Has he got three days with the same deal? I believe so, yeah. Look, Blue de Bella is uh, sorting all that out. Breaking news, George Kambosis refusing to sign his own contract he sent to Devin Haney in order to fight for Undisputed in his own country. According to my sources, after Devin Haney agreed to all of Combosa's bogus terms within 72 hours and signed the contract, now all of a sudden, Duck Bosis is negotiating to get more money, even though initially he has already agreed to all of the terms. In fact, those were his own freaking terms he sent Devin Haney. So the million dollar question, What's taking Cab Bosis so long to sign his own freaking contract when Devin Haney been signed his contract four days ago? TikTok. The clock is ticking for Cam Bosis to grow some cojones and sign his own contract. So let's get this straight. George Cambosis sent Devin Haney a bogus offer for one purpose. That type of ridiculous lowballing offer was meant to be denied not accepted since George Cambosis used Devin Haney free agent status to get him to sign to ESPN for a three fight deal in order to leverage and take more money from ESPN to his own pocket. So basically he used Devin Haney free agent status to receive more money from ESPN. Then George Cambosis had the audacity to tell Devin Haney he has three days, essentially 72 hours to review all of the devil in the details for this bogus offer, agree to it, and sign it, all within three days. So when Devin Haney did exactly that, where he signed the contract within three days, four days later, after Devin Haney signed his contract, it turned out to be that George Cambosa still hasn't signed his contract to this day. I mean, how you tell someone to sign a contract within three days, then turn around and do otherwise? You really can't make this up. Only Cab Bosis can. To make matters worse, George Cambosis hasn't had the contract only for four days. Absolutely not. George Cambosis has had this contract for three freaking months already. Therefore, what is Cab Bosis reviewing? Reviewing how to duck? because this is his own contract that he written and sent Devin Haney. Remember, this is the same offer George Kambosis already accepted to fight Lomachenko. All of a sudden now, George Kambosis is still reviewing the same offer three months later, only when it came to Devin Haney. But then when he's asked about Devin Haney, he says, I gotta make sure there's no fake signatures. Man, get this Spartan Hollywood actor out of here. See, what really happened there, Cabosis ran out of lies to lie about. That's really what it is. Devin Haney caught his bluff. Now it's time to grow some cojones. Last but not least, George Cambosis versus Devin Haney is so reminiscent to Tommy Burns versus Jack Johnson. There was ridiculous amount of pressure on the Australian Tommy Burns to fight Jack Johnson. So what Tommy Burns did, he asked for a ridiculous amount of money that he thought no one could offer, which was 30,000 at the time. And that was a lot of money, at least back in the 1920s. Tommy Burns purposefully asked for that amount of money because he felt that no one will come up with that type of money. But luckily someone did come up with that type of money. That's when Tommy Burns was shocked. However, he still made extra demands. A hundred years later, the Australian George Kambosis is doing the same thing to Devin Haney. He sent Devin Haney a bogus offer on purpose, thinking Devin Haney was going to turn it down because he was under the impression that no fighter in Devin Haney position will accept such a bullshit offer. However, Devin Haney did for legacy. Now George Kambosis is shaking in his boots because now he has to back up all of that trolling he has been doing. 
At this moment in time, there is no way out for George Combosis because ESPN and DAZN, they both are not willing to pay for any George Combosis fight at the moment in time if it's not for undisputed against Devin Haney. And if Combosis walks away, then the money that's on the pot will be given to Devin Haney and his new opponent. While George Combosis' reputation will be in the dirt, deeper than Ryan Garcia. With the facts being laid out, drop your thoughts in the comment section below, subscribe below, and click on the notification bell to be continued on the next episode of Aki, Aki, Ak TV. Peace, and I'm on to the next one. I chased Tommy Burns around the world in order to get him into the ring with me. It was a two-year job. I took on every potential contender between myself and the champion. I virtually had to mow my way to Burns. Always he made excuses. And he openly insulted me by uttering unprintable remarks and calling me yellow. Rather than face Jack Johnson, the champion Tommy Burns took on a series of white challengers. He fought and knocked out one man three different times while continuing to tell reporters, all coons are yellow. But Johnson refused to be ignored. Everywhere Burns went, San Francisco to New York, New York to Paris, Paris to London, Johnson went too. Burns had run out of excuses. He accepted the 30,000, plus the lion's share of the proceeds that would come from showing movies of the contest. John L. Sullivan was livid. Shame on Burns, he said, for upsetting good American precedent. Johnson was to be paid just $5,000, but he'd gotten his chance. Come on in. This, this I got is all the big money, channel. big money here. Big money yes, here. They've yes. they been talking. They know. Get out the way. Let them talk. Let the bosses talk. Young bosses, man. Dev, he said that you he he wants you to look exciting. He only wants exciting fights. So he he, wants I, I think he's going to look very exciting. I think mm. he's going to put on a beautiful performance. But um, he knows what he got what he got what to do. He's not going to. Wait, you know, wait. Look all over. due respect. Why do why do you feel like I need to look exciting or whatever the case may be? Why not just make it happen for all the belts, no matter what? Oh, no, no, no. We're, we're gonna we're gonna do that. As as long as as long as if it makes it got to make sense. It makes sense. No, of course. Of and course. I know you already said you come to Charlotte. That's beautiful because I've got I'll fight really you on Jupiter if I got to. Look, <laughs> hey, I told Eddie if someone pulls out, I'll fight this weekend. No, Regardless no, of the cut, no, 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 this no, weekend. No, no, no. But no, do you we respect him respect as a champion of your division? Yes, of course I respect him. I always have respected him, and he knows how much I've respected him. And there is a mutual respect here. But if things go right, and the dotted line obviously but gets signed by both sides, is this things the true will undisputed? Change. Is this the true undisputed right here? Look, no. we're gonna get it done, and you know what? There won't be any there won't more, be no more disputes. games we'll or, or, go, or bullshit about what it is. So Why do you think Devin has been so so much avoided? Why do you think he's been like one of the most avoided fighters like out there?